Hi, it's Alex from Groovy Entertainment. Today we got another CD to play for you. Today's CD is to premiere with Batman and Robin from 1945, Story 11. So let's get started. Kellogg's Pep, the super delicious cereal, presents the adventures of Superman. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings in a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman! Yes, it's Superman. And today, as the girl reporter Lois Lane stands trial for her very life, Clark Kent and his friends seek desperately for some means of proving her innocence. Lois Lane is on trial for her life, charged with having shot a federal agent. As we know, the real murderess is a girl named Dixie Lamar, who bears a striking resemblance to Lois. Taking advantage of this, Dr. Bly, the cunning leader of Dixie's gang, trapped Lois at an amusement park, planted the murder weapon and other damaging evidence in her apartment, and then he partially drugged Lois and dressed her in Dixie's clothes and saw to it that she fell into the hands of the police. While witness after witness identified Lois as Dixie Lamar at the trial, Clark Kent sat strangely aloof, seemingly not altogether convinced of the girl reporter's innocence. But suddenly, when Lois testified as to why she had gone to the amusement park, Kent leaped to his feet and rushed from the courtroom, telling Perry White and Jimmy Olsen to follow him. As we continue now, in the corridor outside the courtroom, White is demanding an explanation. What's the idea of driving us out here, Ken? Yeah, Miss Lane is on the witness stand. I know, Jim, but this is a matter of Lois's life. When she explained why she went to Playland, I realized that she's innocent. Huh? Oh, you did? Yes. I'd only been sure of it before. But, Just a minute, Olsen. Kent, are you out of your mind? Not at all, Chief. You see, I... I see, all right. Because Lois made a couple of wisecracks before she went to the amusement park that night. You, who haven't any more sense of humor than the cigar store Indian, decided she was a gangster. No, it oh, isn't. Oh, come on, Olsen, come on. Let's go back to the trial. No, wait, Chief. No, wait for what? Lois is being persecuted in there. Oh, I don't know what I can do, but maybe I can think of something. Well, you better think of something fast, Mr. White. Looks awful bad for Miss Lane. I thought of something. addressing the jury. Will you get away from that door, Kent? Not until you listen to me. There's only one way to save Lois. Oh, sure, sure. Convince the jury that the judge and prosecuting attorney are both empty-headed goofs. But I'll do it. I'll hire a new lawyer. I'll hire a whole battery of new lawyers. That won't help, and you know it. It's too late. The case will go to the jury any minute now. Our only hope of saving Lois's life is to produce the real murderess, Lois Lane's double. Huh? Her what? Her double. It's obvious that the real murderess, Dixie Lamar, must be a double for Lois in face and figure. What? Her double? Why, Good God, why the... Well, you must be right, Kent. Dixie Lamar must be a ringer for Lois. All those witnesses who swore they'd seen Lois shoot the federal agent actually saw Dixie. It was Dixie and her gang who kidnapped Lois, then drugged her and dressed her in the same clothes Dixie wore on the night of the murder. And, and planted the, the gun and the key to Dixie's safe deposit box in Miss Lane's apartment. Correct, Jim. Now, Kent, what? you've really got a hit on you. Now, come on. We'll go in there and tell her the truth. No, no, wait, Chief. Miss Lane has been here. Come here. Miss Lane. Chief. Attorney is tearing Miss Lane's story to pieces. No. Look, Dick, 
I want you to contact Batman at once. I think he can help us. Okay, Mr. Kent. Well, what's always Dick going to find Batman? Huh? Oh. Oh, uh, uh, uh That's yeah. what I was going to say, Mr. Kent. That's right. How do you expect me to contact Batman? Well, uh, you see, w w when I talked to him yesterday, uh, Dick, he, he was still at Playland trying to pick up a clue to Hemingway. He he's probably still there. Playland closed last night for the season. So what? Batman is probably still looking around there. Oh, sure, he probably is. I'll try to find him, Mr. Kent. Good. Have him call me at the Daily Planet, Dick. Okay. But what do you want Batman for? Chief, you and I'll shoot back to the office and see if we can dig up Dixie in our clipping more. In our clipping more? Right. I'll tell Lois's order to try to solve the proceedings as long as he can. Oh, Jim could do that. You run out and find a taxi, Chief. I'll be right with you. Okay. Well, what's going on, Mr. Kent? No time to answer questions, Jim. Just listen and get this. Tell Lois's lawyer that we're on the trail of something and to keep the case from going to the jury just as long as he can. You got that? Well, sure. Don't but... interrupt now. Every second counts. You stay here at the trial, but slip out every 15 minutes or so and phone me at the planet, right? A check. But I wish you'd tell me what... Get back to the courtroom now and see Lois's lawyer. Okay. And keep your fingers crossed. Rushing from the courthouse as the prosecuting attorney concludes his final summation to the jury with a demand that Lois be found guilty, Kent and Perry White leap into a taxi and speed to the Daily Planet. There, White assigns almost his entire staff to search through the back files of the paper, seeking the picture of a girl who resembles Lois Lane. While in an ante room, the gray haired editor and Kent likewise leap through old copies of the planet. No luck yet, Kent. I'm getting dizzy. Well, keep going, Chief. This is our only chance. No, no, no. No, Kent, when I think of poor Lois, the finest girl I've ever known, being persecuted for a crime she didn't commit, I. I know, I know, I... Chief, I know. But they haven't convicted her yet, and, well, while there's life, there's hope. I can't stand it, I tell you. What's the matter with Olson? Why doesn't he keep us posted? He called just a few minutes ago. He says Lois' lawyer had made a strong appeal for a delay, saying he'd heard about some possible new evidence, but the judge refused. Oh, Lord. Well, what about Batman? Why don't we hear from him? He's at police headquarters now, going through the files. Did he call the home he found anything? If he finds anything. If? I tell you, I can't stand this uncertainty, Kent. My heart will give out of that. Oh, the phone, the phone. Maybe, maybe that's also no more Batman. Here, I, I got it. Hello? Oh, oh yes, Jim. I can't. 
can't stand it. Because this time, beyond a reasonable doubt, whether the defendant, Lord Lane, did truly masquerade as one Dick de Lamar, and in that identity, did shoot to death young Stone federally. She didn't, she didn't. Oh, a feather. The defendant told the truth when she testified that a web of circumstantial evidence had been woven about her by persons unknown. Oh, of course she told the truth. She was framed. I have interpreted the evidence to the best of my ability. You will remember that the life of a human being is in your hands. And you will weigh all admissible evidence to the best of your ability and in the light of your conscience. The jury will now retire. Superman with Batman and Robin, Story 11 from 1945. So please like, subscribe, share, and comment, and have a groovy day. We have another video coming out real soon.